Hey tribe! So, it may not be a secret to some of you that throughout my life I had a lot of challenges. And initially it was in my teens when I realized I don't want to do regular studying, which is a huge thing in my country. Like, you, in my country, at least back in the day, you had to study. Even if you didn't want to or you didn't know what, you better choose some random crap and you study. Uh, but there, there's no alternative, especially if you have a high enough IQ, and unfortunately I did have a high enough IQ. And then at that day, I realized that's not my path. It was a long struggle. Maybe I'll tell about that struggle in a, another video. It's actually a great story. But uh, then I decided that I wanted to become an Aikido instructor, a martial arts instructor. And uh, it was a huge battle with my parents. I had to convince them that that's the right choice. And again, long story short, uh, nobody believed in me in the beginning that I am going to make it or that's a good idea. And it took me eight years from the day I thought and came up with the idea that I wanted to be an Aikido instructor. Uh, it took about eight years for me to become one. And then eventually nobody said anything about that. Everybody said, you know what, you're actually right, or they just stayed <laughs> silent. Uh, then I started my YouTube channel, The March Arts Journey, which now is a big thing, a pretty big thing, big thing I think. And initially I, I saw the vision that it's going to be big, but nobody believed in me. Again, everybody said like, what the heck are you doing? This is, you know, this is crap, this is nonsense. And now I don't get that that much anymore. And it's interesting enough that uh, right now I'm back in that period again, what uh, you could say, I just finished listening to an audio book, a really good one, a short but great book uh, called The Dip by Seth Godin, a very good marketing expert, if not the best in the world. And he specifically spoke about uh, that whenever you want to do something exceptional, whenever you go on to a path of doing something big, uh, something unusual, you will have to face the dip, like a long period where things won't work out, nobody will believe in you, uh, and uh, you will kind of feel like it's hopeless, like there's, it's not going anywhere, and you have to live through that to make it to the other end and uh, to, yeah, to, to finally achieve it. And uh, I've been through that already, like I just mentioned to you. I've been there a couple of times uh, through my keto career, then through my YouTube channel. But uh, I didn't... My dog. <laughs> I don't... I didn't think that I will get there again. And uh, when I started my newest project called The Journey, uh, I didn't expect as much backlash. And I have to admit, I made some big mistakes. Uh, I started from the wrong and... I should have started uh, from small things and then developed big things and then I went the opposite way, I kind of told everyone about the big final results that I wanted to see and achieve and it was too big, it was too vague and, and people freaked out, uh, especially because I also connected with that with a certain outfit, uh, long story if you don't know, but uh, long story short again, uh, I am facing a dip again and finally I'm starting to see some uh, moments of success where I'm seeing, oh, you know, this is gonna work. Uh, but the beginning of it, which started, well, right now it's April 2020, it's, uh, I started announcing all of this uh, at the beginning of the year, so the very beginning of January. So it's been about four months now that I'm on this journey, and uh, it was way bumpier than I expected. I thought that uh, my achievements will help me already kind of go through this journey on an easier way or kind of in other words uh, my influence the fact that I already uh, have a hundred thousand followers uh, plus on YouTube and uh, and uh, there's a lot of people who are who are interested in my martial arts journey I thought naturally they'd be interested in this journey as well and they weren't probably do a lot to because I freaked them out <laughs> so it's kind of my fault too I didn't go through this in the best approach, but also too, that's a lesson. That's the wonderful thing about that. It's because if I wouldn't have screwed up the beginning of taking this next step in the journey, uh, then I, I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't have faced these difficult times that I have to go through now. And I wouldn't have learned all these lessons. I was forced to remember again, what it means to start over, what it means to, do something that people don't believe in you doing and what it starts what it means to start a new youtube channel when you're not getting those views and you're not getting those likes just because you're already out there and uh, and it's so right now i can really appreciate it because those lessons are so 
valuable because I remembered again what it means to start from ground zero. And for me, it's so important to support other people in their journeys, to, to inspire people and motivate them to, to get through the dip and to, to, to live their dreams. And although it may sound a bit naive, but, but honestly, that's what I'm really passionate about. And uh, for me to go through this journey again and to remember so vividly, so clearly what huge challenges it takes to start something new, uh, it's great because now I can relate again much more with people who are going to go through this path as well. But now the reason I'm making this video and, and what this video is about, uh, I'm planning to call it the hard the lessons I learned, lessons I learned the hard way. Uh, so this is this meaning that uh, if this will become into a series, this is episode one, but if it will turn into series uh, of episodes, I will be sharing what I learned through direct experience. Because again, if, uh, as I criticized in one of my videos, sometimes we read something in a book and we're like so hyped and excited, this sounds so good, and we go and tell the whole world about it, and then we expect the whole world to believe it just because we find it cool. But until we go for a process of actual application, until we actually deal with situations where we apply that knowledge, that knowledge beforehand is kind of not that useful. It doesn't have that same weight. So in this series, uh, in a certain format, which I will introduce to you in just a moment, in this series, I decided to share um, the specific lessons I learned the hard way, or in other words, through direct experience, the, the difficulties I bumped into and what methods I sought out and that helped me. So the, the way I will do this, uh, I have my laptop in front of me, so you see it here. And I started with this picture, not without a reason. It's because this is actually the, let me show you, this is actually the desktop picture. I have a rotating desktop, but but luckily this is, <laughs> this is the one right now. And this is a thing I did already a number of times where back in the day when I was struggling with my initial Aikido journey, uh, just trying to become an Aikido instructor, uh, and I needed some inspiration, I needed some reminders that I will make it through, uh, I would make a desktop wallpaper with a symbol which would inspire me, which would remind me what, uh, what motivates me and what I'm about and give me kind of that inner strength. But I would also do this. I would add some quotes or ideas that resonated with me that I found through that challenge and that kind of really gave me that motivation, that sense of this is what I need to work on, this is what I need to focus on, this, this is what is going to get me through this. And, uh, and so I would put it on that cool wallpaper and then I, every time I would see it, I would look at it, I would read it and that would remind me what I need to focus on, again, to get through this dip, through this challenge, through this difficulty. And uh, this, uh, I haven't done this for years because my life was pretty good. I was, you know, having a successful Aikido school for, for seven years. Then uh, my YouTube channel switched the dojo. I mean, I, I dropped the dojo, but then the YouTube channel picked up and then I had good views. And, and so my life was, I had my challenges, but it was going quite smoothly. And now I'm back into the space of where I struggle again. I need to overcome obstacles. And that's one more time when I decided I need to do this again. It kind of spontaneously came up that, that desire to use symbolism and, and specific discoveries to motivate myself. So what I'm gonna do in this series, it's a long-winded intro, but I believe it's a valuable one. Uh, uh, and also too, I'm actually doing this in one take consciously because that's my new practice and I find it awesome. But coming back to the video, uh, I will be taking the specific wallpaper that I made and the quotes that I used and already that that it happened. It's not like, oh, I just did it today and I'm gonna share it with you, but but it's like I used it actually to support myself and, and I will share my deepest discoveries and, and challenges and how I overcame them recently uh, with you using that wallpaper as a reference because it was an actual process that, that went through me. It wasn't I wasn't doing it for someone else. I was actually doing it for myself. So let's start with this. <laughs> so I'm gonna look at this wallpaper. I'm gonna, uh, I will uh, specifically bring it up, bring it up to you. Like I will uh, make it, uh, no, I will put it on all the screen. Obviously you're, this is editing stuff and you're already seeing that. 
and I will point out to what I'm looking. So, so first of all, you're seeing the Batman. And to some of you who know me from my videos or personally, it's, it's not a secret that I'm a huge fan of Batman. And that's a story that deserves an episode of itself. And probably I'll, I'll make that in the future of sharing why I, I'm so in love with Batman. But to not make this video too long, I'll just share the basics. Uh, there was a certain period where I was struggling uh, in my kind of desire, passion to become an Aikido instructor. And uh, I, um, that's when I discovered the character of Batman. I, I watched Batman Begins and, and that story really resonated with me. And that was when I realized that, and I dug into the methodology, mythology, sorry, of uh, Batman reading the graphic novels, reading the stories about him. And I learned uh, that, you know, he doesn't have superpowers. Obviously he's rich, but as Christopher Nolan, the director of Batman Begins in the Dark Knight trilogy said, Batman's greatest superpower is his super willpower or super discipline. Uh, and, and that really resonated with me that, that it's what makes Batman special or the character of the mythology is that he, he's very, in a way he's very tunnel visioned, uh, which gives pros and cons, but, but he's all about achieving your purpose no matter what. He's all about 100% dedication, 20% dedication, where he's kind of pushing out everything out the window, which is not serving his purpose. His whole life is about living his purpose. And, and there's a story element of Batman where he struggles to, to be, become a crime fighter and uh, he goes for seven years to travel the world and, and to learn all the skills possible so he would be able to achieve his highest goal. And, uh, and that just inspires me so much, that, that, that metaphor, that, that mythology uh, and that symbol of complete devotion. And whenever I see Batman, whenever I see that sign, it reminds me that I need to completely devote myself to this. There, I, sh I should not look backwards. I should not look sideways. I should be totally dedicated to this. I should devote my 100% to this and I should learn everything that I need to learn about this and I should push through. And there's some great uh, Batman uh, graphic novels. Actually, I have some here in uh, my room of my, my parents' place. Uh, there's some really good ones, which is uh, Batman Year One, that's probably the best one, but there's also uh, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. And um, and these ones, again, I don't want to go too long into the de details on this one, but uh, Batman Year One is the story of uh, Bruce Wayne becoming Batman or, or how he starts and uh, he gets into trouble and uh, he gets like beaten up and he doesn't know what to do. He's kind of lost and confused and tries stuff and some stuff doesn't work. It's really awesome. It's, it's really inspiring and well written uh, by Frank Miller, a legendary uh, graphic novel guy. But also his, the other one, which is again, one of my favorites is where Batman is old and he is struggling to come back as Batman and uh, the community, local community of Gotham, they're not supporting him and, and a lot of people are giving him crap here, he's old. And he's struggling with, uh, you know, his heart and uh, like his heart is giving up on him, like physically, and uh, he has knee problems and so on. And it's, it's such an incredible story. But the thing is, uh, the Dark Knight, that, that whole, uh, again, storytelling is all about him not giving a crap about failure, not giving up even though, you know, the world thinks he's crazy and, and thinks he's doing nonsense. He just keeps on pushing through having that tunnel vision. So believe it or not, this is my f short version of telling why I love Batman, but I hope you're starting to see the picture so that every time I see that symbol, it reminds me, fuck everything. Just push through it, you will make it. It's important that you become your best self, is that you do not give up against adversity, that you keep on going, you keep on owning it until you become your version of the Batman. So that's why on my desktop you see Batman this time, because I was having a difficult time and struggling, thinking, so how do I make through this? How do I push through this dip? 
and I just had to see Batman this and you can see this version of Batman he's kind of oh, in this powerful zone and kind of a bit a bit secretive and kind of a bit symbolic like it's not a clear figure and that 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 just get that strength of fuck yeah you know I will I will own this and uh, then you also see a couple of phrases so <clears throat> Here's doubt is the mind killer, doubt is the greatest sin. And again, uh, this video has become a bit longer than I expected, so I'll, um, I'll see the short versions of my answer. Uh, but the short, the short story is that uh, years ago I was reading uh, Dune, a really nice book, I really liked it. I only read the first part, but, but it was really incredible, very inspiring too. And, and there's a phrase that comes up uh, in the book a few times. I think it's, uh, it says, fear is the mind killer. Uh, so, so the idea is that if you allow fear to hold yourself, then the brain doesn't work as well, kind of the short version. But I also came to my own version of it is doubt is the mind killer, that you should not give in to doubts because doubts are there, but you shouldn't give in to them. And because they kill your brain, you're not seeing the, the real picture anymore when you have doubts and it paralyzes you. So I should not give in to doubt. Also, doubt is the greatest sin. Uh, that's a quote actually from the Bhagavad Gita, a, a sacred religious kind of text, but I think it goes beyond religion. And uh, it depends also on the, uh, the way it was translated, but it's an Indian uh, book uh, from a long, long time ago. Uh, again, it, it deserves another episode, but uh, basically it's uh, a guy called Arjuna talking to a god figure, Krishna, and they have a, a dialogue about kind of what it means to, to serve your purpose. And, and one of the phrases there is that, uh, that you shouldn't have doubts. And actually now I just remember as I spoke, so it's connected, but doubt is the greatest sin. It's, I, I, I once read that that's what Buddha said, the Buddha Siddhartha Gautama. He said that doubt is the greatest sin uh, that you should not doubt. And, and that phrase, again, there's a long story. There's so many good stories. I should start telling them on video. Uh, but there is one moment in my life when um, I remembered, I, I saw clearly that I should not believe in doubts. That doubts are just noise and, and the doubt is a sin. But that's, that's why I like that powerful phrase from Buddha that doubt is the greatest sin in terms that you should not doubt. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't you know, consider whether this is good or whether this is bad, but doubt is beyond that. Doubt is just kind of going back and forth in circles and never coming to a conclusion. You should, you know, be smart and consider with, if this is the right way, make, you know, some adjustments, but doubt itself, you sh should be out of the window. You shouldn't uh, use doubt as a, a mechanism, as a tool. So that's why I like the phrase, doubt is the greatest sin. That, that was because I, I was having doubts when I started this new journey. So I had, I wanted to make sure that I don't give in to doubts, and those two phrases, uh, they kind of uh, allowed me to, to keep it pushing through and not remember to not listen to them. Uh, the next one is, no great achievements came without resistance. Uh, that's a bit inspired by the, the, the book The Dip of uh, Seth Godin, uh, but also uh, I know that from experience that, that if you start something new, unusual, and big, resistance will come and the bigger it is the more resistance you will have it's not a bad sign it's just something you need to push through and that's why i wrote this down for myself and, and kind of in other words that if you're having a lot of resistance there's a big chance you're doing something right i experienced that before and i used that phrase to remind myself of it and then a couple more i have the right to my attempts and failures there is nothing i should be ashamed about uh, about that uh, and also to uh, just get to give you a pointer actually all of this Hmm. I didn't write it down in one day. Initially, I started with that is mind killer, that is the greatest sin, and then some days later, I would I would get get that insight, that feeling of oh, this idea is kind of giving me the strength to to keep on, and then I would write down no good achievements came without resistance, and then sometime later, and this one another one came down, and so I was using this actively. I'm still using this on my desktop, but actively I was using it for like three months. So it's a whole journey packed into this picture. But yeah, so a couple more. I have the right to my attempts and failures, and there's nothing I should be ashamed about. A lot of people were giving me crap when I started this new journey, and they were saying, you know, you're, you're going crazy, this is a midlife crisis. And again, I understand why people thought that, but but that was hard, you know, when a hundred people say to you that that same negative comment starts to get in your head. 
and I started feeling a bit paralyzed when I was publishing new footage, new content on my new channel. Uh, I was I started to feel like I'm afraid to to push publish something that people will judge me for, and I realized it's starting to paralyze me uh, because people are expecting a lot from me, especially I guess because I showed some good things on my initial channel, and people were were some people were let down that I'm not publishing any more videos on that, so they wanted me to keep keep doing something as great. But I realized I need to fail, and I, I embrace failure. I think it's an awesome thing to embrace failure. It's a great method. But obviously, you know, we're still human and failures do scare us. It's kind of natural for human beings. But, um, but yeah, I realized that I shouldn't be ashamed of my failures. And, and there were some moments where I would publish some new video, you know, like I tried, I, I made the video, I tried myself to curse myself for 10 days. It's kind of unusual. You know, it was a new video, it was a new, new experiment. And I knew some people will, will give me the eye and be like, what the heck are you doing, bro? Because you're doing crazy. And I was a bit ashamed of that feeling. And I realized, look, eventually the realization that made me stronger was the realization that I, it's my process. I need to do this. It's my thing. Fuck off, everyone. You know, it's my failures and, and leave them to me. Like, if you don't want to watch those videos, don't watch them. I shouldn't feel ashamed about my explorations. I shouldn't be ashamed about the, the stuff I failed at. It's, I need it. If I don't fail, if I don't allow myself to fail, if I don't take risks, I will never achieve anything beyond my current potential. That's, that's how we expand, that's how we grow. And, and I realized that I need to put it in my head that I have the right to fail, I have the right to experiment. Nobody can forbid me from doing that. And, uh, and I shouldn't be ashamed of it and fuck everyone. So, so that was a powerful, powerful moment. And the last one, everything that I will learn here will be useful to someone else in the future, including myself. Uh, that's another motivating force that I used already in the past, but I kind of re-remembered it in, in, this time, in this challenging time. And that was, um, uh, I, I made another video about this. If you're interested, you can watch it. It's like a 10 minute video where I call it uh, how I motivate myself. And there's some other text next to it, but, but that's kind of the basic, the basis of it. And I speak about the, how it was always important for me to feel that I'm serving others, to feel that, that I'm a part of a bigger whole. And that's like an actual belief that I have. It's not an idea uh, that I do feel like I'm a part of the whole and that I, I need to serve. I need to be useful. I need to put in value to everyone. I need to give back. To the world because the world has given me so much you know this body it's a whole another story but the essence of it is this body these clothes everything was given to me this life air everything and i need to kind of serve back and 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 give back for for getting this uh, and uh, and i did realize in the past that if i want to be able to give much i need to experience a lot i need to go through shit I need to overcome challenges that others haven't yet. I need to climb the mountain and experience stuff which others haven't yet so I could look from there and say, look, no, I, I saw the steps. I know what you're going through. I've been there and and maybe these discoveries that I made will help you. And so, so, so that's what allows me to have that courage to experiment, to try things, to, to not give in to fear. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's kind of how I uh, motivate myself uh, on another level by realizing that oh sorry <laughs> i was talking a long time without making a break so i'm about to be done though um yeah so let me get back to that point uh so yeah that my troubles and the troubles i'm going through is not only for myself but it's also for others that i need to keep on pushing through that i need to keep challenging myself and and go through shit and develop and and develop myself and to overcome it and learn from it because whatever I will learn, that's what will make me valuable. That's what will make me useful uh, to others because that's that's a real value. And that's kind of what this video is about and that's kind of what I'm sharing sharing here. So so yeah, that, that kind of covers my uh, my thing, my, my desktop. Uh, it's a long episode, it's much longer than I usually make, but I feel this is important and this is like useful stuff. Uh, but do let me know, if, uh, what do you think about it all? Uh, what do you think about the city? What do you think about this kind of format? As you know, I'm experimenting and trying things and, 
And I have my beliefs, I have my knowledge as well, so I make my own decisions, but I always appreciate hearing your feedback. If it means something to you, it always means so much to hear that from me, because I, I will keep doing this one way or another, but to know that you know the, the thing touched you uh, makes me even more, more motivated to continue. So, so let me know what you think about this format. I'm, I have already, I'm working on another desktop for myself. The challenges I'm overcoming right now, it'll take a while until I will go through that process and then I can then digest it and share it. But I'm thinking about doing that. There's a lot of stories I remember while talking to you that, that I think are super good and super valuable. Some of them are like when I was traveling in India, talking to monks and, and some of them when I was living in an Aikido school in Switzerland and there's some good stories that I think, yeah, just I just realized I probably should put them on, on video because some people might benefit from them. But yeah, let me know what you think. I really appreciate your feedback. Don't forget that. And uh, I hope you like this video. And uh, as also too, try it out. You know, don't hesitate to try out and make a desktop for yourself. What symbol inspires you? What pushes you to go forward? Put that on your desktop. Put on the main phrases. Do your thing, own your life. So, thank you for sticking through until the very end. Um, it's great to spend some honest, sincere time with you and uh, keep questioning. <laughs>